Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this regular Metacom video, we're going to be tackling two news stories which have popped up, as usual, over the past 24 or so hours. The first story concerns AMD's Vega Frontier Edition, and the fact that it's considerably cheaper than the original touted price, plus it actually features a gaming mode, plus a few other details, and then we're going to move over to Intel's Coffee Lake, and information on the release dates of motherboards and other bits and bobs. So, first things first, Vega. I don't really feel I have to introduce this card. While customers are still waiting for the RX derivatives, which of course are aimed at, well, the gaming market, the Frontier Editions are now formally launched. Now, the good news is that they are considerably cheaper than the original pricing, which had popped up on the internet a couple of weeks ago. How much cheaper? Around two to three hundred US dollars. Now, that's not to say that you can buy two for a penny. They are still a thousand dollars for the air cooler uh, version, but it's not bad, especially when you consider the fact that it is for the prosumer. It's for the high end market. We all know the specifications by now. It's, of course, got 26.2 T-flops of half-precision performance, 1600 MHz core clock, uh, that's with boost, of course, 16 gigabytes of um, HBM2 memory, and 483 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. But what is rather interesting... So this card is marketed to the prosumer, as I've just mentioned. This means that it can do anything from, let's say, mining down to Autodesk Maya, 3D rendering, video editing, that type of stuff. But furthermore, it's down for games developers. So what AMD have done here is actually provide access to both the pro mode as well as gaming drivers. Now... Rather than make them separate downloads, what it appears is that the drivers can be essentially downloaded, installed with a, sing with a single package, and then basically you switch between the driver modes in the control panel. Unfortunately, there are some issues here. The first is that it's not very well detailed at the moment, at least as the time I'm recording this video. We don't know even if it requires a reboot. We don't know the exact performance levels of these drivers. Now, there are some whispers in the wind, and how much attention you want to pay to these is totally down to you. But supposedly, there was some murmurs originally that, you know, Vega was being delayed because of HPM2 shortages, or perhaps because some of the silicon was being diverted from the Frontier Edition to the Gaming Editions. But recent whispers is it's not that. In fact, a couple of websites, one of them being videocards.com, are saying that that's not the case. They're hearing from the grapevine that the reason they're delaying the gaming version of the cards is very simple. That's right, they want to get the most performance out of their drivers possible for when they face off against GeForce. Now, don't forget, AMD have made that mistake a couple of times in the past. They basically released hardware a bit early. Ryzen definitely suffered from this, especially BIOSes. And one could also levy a very similar criticism to RX 480s or the 400 series, basically Polaris. I feel that if Polaris had probably waited maybe about a month or so, they probably could have wrangled a bit more performance out of the drivers. Obviously, it's a lot easier for teams to be able to test drivers and kind of do a lot more bug fist fixing when the driver when the hardware's not released yet because a it's less pressure and b they can just you know have a more enclosed test uh, facility and this is actually one of the reasons that the 1060s when it was launched really kind of trounced the polaris lineup but, but later on amd kind of countered by releasing driver updates unfortunately those subsequent driver updates weren't really covered by a lot of websites so it basically looked like the 1060 was faster than the 480s when that wasn't necessarily the case, and that's why in some websites, if you were to look at the performance difference of like the 580, and then look at the performance difference of the 580 compared to the 480, there's actually quite a lot of difference between the 580 and the 480. In reality, that's not the case. Anyway, this is getting way outside the remit of this video. So, it looks like AMD are trying to basically optimise the drivers as best as possible for the release. So, unfortunately, this means a couple of things. Firstly, whether there's going to be any difference whatsoever between the Frontier Edition and RX is completely unbeknownst now, because for some time, Raja Kodori has been telling us that if you want the best gaming performance, you should go with RX. Well, now, our, uh, Frontier Edition actually has a gaming mode. So now my question is, are they essentially the same thing, 
or does RX have a few other changes in the hardware? For example, does it have higher clock speeds? Does it have perhaps more aggressive boosting? Does it have even slightly different drivers? Does it have maybe some actual physical hardware differences? I just don't know, and unfortunately no one else does, at least as far as I'm aware. Well, at least anyone outside of AMD or people who haven't signed a lot of NDAs. The other issue is that Vega is not going to be available to reviewers. And that's not to say you can't review it. So in other words, if you were to, I don't know, be given a thousand bucks and then you want to go out and buy that card, then by all means you can do that. Unfortunately, reviewers just won't be given it. And that's quite difficult because it basically means most people, you know, most websites can't afford a thousand bucks unless they're going to be using that card as well, you know, for other usages. They just can't afford like a thousand dollars to throw down as a review sample. In case you don't know, most websites, when they're given a review sample, it's not for keepses. Sometimes it is. Uh, if you get the hardware really late, let's say, for example, you're sent a piece of hardware and it's kind of like your back of the pile because, you know, the company didn't know about you, maybe they contacted you later, or maybe it's a cheap item. So, for example, it's a cheap GPU. Maybe, you know, you're given, like, I don't know, equivalent of, like, a 560 or 550. Then sometimes they won't ask for it back because, honestly, when you factor in shipping and the effort of repackaging it, they just think, eh, we'd rather just take the loss. Like, we'll make it back anyway. But for newer products, generally, you're asked to give that hardware back or forward it directly to another reviewer. Generally, it's you send it back to the company in question, and obviously they'll do fault testing and make sure that you didn't break it or what have you, and then, you know, whatever. So what that basically means is most reviewers don't cough up money. They essentially get it on a loan basis. Therefore, most reviewers just don't really have that cash to throw up a thousand dollars. I mean, let's, fa let's face it, if you were to keep having to do that for like the GTX 1080 tires and all the other hardware in the world, you just wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, it just wouldn't be profitable. So I'm kind of annoyed AMD haven't done this, given Vega for reviewers. Now, that's not to say that I feel entitled or anything like that. Like, I would be cool if any website got it. Uh, even if it was a very limited, finite supply, I just don't like the fact it's not. Now, my you can interpret this one of two ways. The first is that AMD basically just don't want to do it because, well, it's their prerogative. Perhaps it's too expensive or perhaps they feel that, you know, their target demographic of the prosumer is going to buy it for other usage scenarios or maybe they just don't feel confident enough yet for gaming. But I don't really know if I buy that as an answer because let's just be really honest here. People are going to review it. Like... Someone, you know, it could be John, it could be, you know, Samantha, gets hold of this card and then decides to run a few gaming tests on it because ultimately they will do it. Even if they're buying this card for other usages, let's face it, someone somewhere in that office, if it's for professional use, is going to, you know, try and load up Quake on it because that's just what people do. So eventually reviews will appear and obviously it won't be more than a week or two at most. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even that long before we get you know, data. So, you know, for them to hide disappointing gaming performance, I don't necessarily know if they'd do that. But, unfortunately, all we can do is wait and see. Personally, at this point, I just want to see bloody Vega, the RX derivative running some games. Uh, PC World, when they had a hands-on preview, estimates it's roughly on par between the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti. That's for gaming. But there were some questions. Was that running in gaming mode? I don't know, because they haven't said, and AMD haven't said. So there are a lot of frustrating questions at the moment for launch, and quite frankly, I just kind of want to know at this point. Not just for my sake, because obviously I own a GTX 1080, which I bought with my own money, um, but also for, you know, for a lot of uh, viewers, because a lot of folks are saying, well, should I buy X card? Unfortunately, it's very difficult. And with the GPU market, how it is right now, especially the 500 series, they're... The, the crypto craze at the moment is just absolutely making prices for graphics cards insane, insanity. So, you know, prices have just gone up so much, partly because of DRAM, partly because of demand, because of mining. So it, it, it's making things very interesting, let's just say that. Anyway, uh, I guess the next logical thing to finish off this video is MSI. Why MSI? Because they have confirmed Coffee Lake. Specifically the motherboards, anyway. 
the Z370 derivatives, are going to be hitting store shelves on the fourth quarter of this year. So obviously that's several months into the future. Um, and it looks like they're quite happy about it. They feel, from what I can read, pretty boisterous. Um, they've said one of their one of their representatives said, and I quote, some of you might have heard that many of the resources that Intel launch will launch a Z370, but it will be in Q4. I'm not supposed to say it, but please focus on the Z270. So in other words, oops, kind of thing. Uh, and they also believe they've made excellent progress. This is according to Intel themselves. In fact, we expect to see the 8th generation core uh, laptops and desktops by holidays season of next year. Oh, sorry, this year. Now saying that it's going to be a 30%, that's Intel, not MSI, improvement between the 7th and 8th generation. Unfortunately, that would appear to be a laptops primarily is the, the caveat. So we don't really know. Um, as for what you're going to be expecting on the actual chipset, well, obviously the fact that you're going to be able to run Coffee Lake CPUs, aside from that, it's going to be integrated USB 3.1 Generation 2, Gigabit Wi-Fi, and, well, I don't know what else, to be honest with you. With all of that said, I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.